I want you to give me your best impression of a turkey gobbling. Like, like it, your life depends on it. Your family's life depends on it. <laughs> was that good? <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> you said life depends on it, dude. I got in, I got in the zone. <laughs> The auto zone or the the farm? <laughs> uh, both of them. <laughs> First one's I mean, better. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not really a gobble, but it's pretty good. Hmm. Pretty good. Well done. All right. Well, we've done it. We've made it to the Jackie Robinson of podcast episode forty two, the Poor Choice Show. I'm your host Chris. This is my co-host David. And to Bruce Lee, Bill Nye, Jimi Hendrix, James Avery, and Twista. Happy, Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Make some poor choices. The fridge keeps them pretty cold. That's hot warm. Fuck. Subscribe. So there was a, uh, uh, I can't believe this is happening. Uh, there was a uh, Sunday game 10 days ago, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I made a bet. Uh, that was your first mistake? That I lost, and uh, I have to put this on. Ooh. And uh, I've never even touched one of these before. Now I have to no. wear one. No. I think he's touched Plenty of things like women in bathrooms. This is bullshit. So, who was the bet with? I'm assuming they supplied that dude at work. Yeah. Hmm. And if we won, he would have had to wear mine at work. Did you have to wear it at work or were you like, no, I told him I'd wear it on here and he would wear his at work and. You're like, I'd rather have six people see it than the entire customer base. This is bullshit. Hey, you go. You happy, Connor? You son of a bitch. Well, that might uh, that might answer this question I have, but I'll ask it anyway. Let me get my feathers right. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's a weird thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fluff up. Uh, all right. Well, what's one piece of advice that you would give your 18-year-old self? Mm, don't smoke. I thought it was going to be like, don't make bets with Steelers fans or or stay in school, stay in school and don't smoke all in one wrapped up together like a joint. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Nothing like, you know, buy Bitcoin now or I feel like um, you could smoke all you want and say, fuck school. And if you bought one Bitcoin. You're good. Actually, that's a good point. Like, like buy like five bitcoins and invest all your money in Tesla as soon as it becomes public. Yeah, I feel like that'd be a waste of money if you put it all in Bitcoin. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, but if I put it all in Bitcoin, then I would get to that point where I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta, it's going down. I gotta sell, sell, sell. I'd still make a shit ton of money, but so, so tell your younger self, oh, buy Bitcoin yeah, right. and don't sell it until. November 2024. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's good. Okay. All right. I got nothing. It was just a question that popped in my head and I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? I just said I got nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, if you did have to have a something. Uh, probably buy Bitcoin. Don't sell it until <laughs> November 2024. <laughs> Seems like a little bit of a cop out. I think yours is a cop out. I gave you the answer. Yeah, mine was more like life advice. Like I guess that is life advice too. Yeah, then you could just retire at twenty five. Much more life uh, than that, I don't think. I'm not twenty five. At thirty five. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, if you, uh, no, okay, mm -hmm. math. So Thanksgiving's tomorrow. It is. I'm going to see you tomorrow. Are you going to see me today? Uh, I haven't decided yet. I don't know. I thought you weren't going to see me till Saturday. What? Or Friday? No. I thought Kayla said you were coming like Friday after work or something. What? No, the exact text was um, either night before Turkey Day or day of TBD. Hmm. 
Well, I was in Texas and she had full oh. control of baby and dogs. So I hope you have enough food for me on Thanksgiving then. <laughs> if you weren't planning on me being there. <laughs> We're going to have too much as it is. Who, uh, who all is going to be there? Thanks for everyone who's just, very curious. Maybe just dad. Oh, dad's going to be down. Awesome. Yeah. But then I don't know. She's, she's coordinating the, the friends giving on no, Saturday. Um, that's on Saturday. No, uh, Jenna and shark attack. I think Saturday. Oh, okay. Good. Nice. Yeah. The, she's is like it a Ridgeway Saturday too? Are they coming? I don't know. Wait, I, people I doubt it. Something like that. I don't know. I think oh. it's, uh, I think it's like when our wedding was like 300 guests and I was like, yeah, like 10% of them are going to come. So I think it's like that. There'll be a lot of flakes, a lot of uh, like maybes that she's just probably considering a yes. Okay. Um, Ugh. I don't think the Ridgeways are. Well, we're also going to have some real shitty football the entire day to watch. Yeah. So Lions, Bears, Cooper Rush be, versus DeVito. Yeah. that. And then uh, uh, Dolphins... Uh, Who's the late game? Dolphins and somebody not good. There's somebody good versus the Dolphins. I can't remember who. Okay. And then Friday's another crap game. No one cares about. Which one's the uh, Netflix game? Uh, that's uh, it's that's one of the Saturday. it's one of the Thursday Thursday ones, right? I don't think there's a Saturday. Nah, I game. thought it was like a Saturday game. Wait, is there a Saturday game? Uh, there's a something game. Uh, tomorrow's Steelers Browns. Oh, I don't care. No, tomorrow. No, it's not. That's that already happened. You guys already know who won that game. Uh, Thursday, 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 Friday, no Saturday, uh, Dolphins Packers Thursday night. And then tomorrow night is Friday. Netflix Friday's Chiefs Raiders. I thought that was no, I think that's Amazon prime. It don't say, but that, that one's definitely Amazon Prime, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's Christmas is Netflix, if I'm not uh, mistaken. That sounds right. And yeah, that's Ravens right. Texans. Yeah, you ain't gonna be able to watch that one. Well, I'll be able to watch it just slowly. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be watching a spinning wheel. Mm-hmm. Well, there also won't be 50, 60 million people tuned in. But at the same time, get your shit right, Netflix. If you're gonna... I mean, come on. People on Twitch can... Do it. You can do it. Come on, man. <laughs> who ha- who has 60 million Twitch viewers? Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, I guess not. I think Kai Sanat's the biggest, and he's like 150,000 daily, something like that. So not uh, even close. Yeah, not even close. But, yeah. you know, they got it, so you fucking do it. Yeah, um, I, I don't want to get into that. Well, we're wearing festive things. Fluffing my feathers again for you, no homo. If uh, the audio listeners, I have a turkey uh, beanie on with a turkey face on the front and then some feathers on top. Uh, you you like wearing a, uh, audible clothing. Audible clothing? Yeah, like when you're in your Marty McFly and now your feathers are making fluffy noises. Oh, that was me hitting my headphones. Oh, okay. Well, disregard. I can make a noise for my jersey I'm wearing. No, stop. <laughs> that was a rape rape joke. Yeah. Rape joke. We did he, raped, he raped a woman in a bathroom. Okay. Uh, yes. So very festive. Um, yeah. So I'll you want to jump right into it. Yeah. I mean, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. And f- we're going to talk about Thanksgiving stuff and things, you know, yep, stuff and first, things, stuff, ah, uh, stuffing things. <laughs> I'm that'd, be a good, them, right. that'd be a good episode name. Stuffing things. Yeah. That's what Ben Rossberger Talk, did in the bathroom stu- to a woman uh, who didn't want it. <laughs> I mean, uh, We'll see how much time I have to edit, but we'll start like a, a tally. Like a, we'll just go ding, like every time. A rape tally? No, not a rape. <laughs> Who's raping tally? <laughs> tally, if you're listening, uh, I'm on the next flight. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump right into it. I'm yep. going to hit you with some rapid fire Thanksgiving trivia. Hmm. It's weird. It's like, I might have Thanksgiving <laughs> trivia too. That's crazy. Okay, go ahead. I figured you might. So I thought, well, let's make it rapid fire. Make it well, to be honest, I didn't really look at them too much. I just got the link ready. So I was going to click on the link and read them off. But yeah, go ahead. Okay. Ready? Ready. We're going to do some rapid fire Thanksgiving trivia. What state raises the most turkeys? Minnesota. Which president declared the last <laughs> Thursday of November to be Thanksgiving? 
Uh, Roosevelt? Abraham Lincoln. How much did the world's largest pumpkin pie weigh? Oh, my God. I don't know. Uh, four tons. Uh, I don't know how much that is. 3,699 pounds. Okay. 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 How many people attended the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York City? One and a half million. Three and a half million. Damn it. What is I did look at some of them. <laughs> 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 if you couldn't tell by that Minnesota right off the bat. I thought it was just one of those <laughs> random things you know. Are you on goodhousekeeping.com? Uh, I'm on Microsoft Word. But that did you get it was from probably where I got it. Fuck. Okay. Okay. What is typically the biggest safety hazard on Thanksgiving? Um, I want to say um, fires, like oil. Oil fires? I'm not sure of the cause, but I have fires. Fires. How many guests do those hosting Thanksgiving dinner usually have on average? I'm going to say a dozen. Close. Eleven. How many women were at the very first Thanksgiving celebration? Ooh, I'm going to say one. Four. Okay. Which city's Thanksgiving Day Parade ends with Santa Claus getting a key to the city? New York? Detroit. No, they had a parade. Do what? Didn't know they had a parade. I didn't know they had Santa Claus. <laughs> I, I thought it was just a dude dressed in black that broke in your house and stole stuff, not gave you right. stuff. Right. <laughs> All right. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, how much does the heaviest turkey on record weigh? 101 pounds. 86 pounds. Ooh. How long was the first Thanksgiving? What do you mean how long? Uh, a day. Three days. What food did the colonists and Native Americans not have at the first Thanksgiving? Corn. Turkey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Corn would have been that. the most easy. Yeah, 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 you idiot. Get it together. Uh, what president refused to declare Thanksgiving a holiday? Roosevelt. Thomas Jefferson. How many turkeys do Americans prepare each Thanksgiving? Like the whole country? Uh, 84 million. 46 million. Damn. What percentage of Americans actually eat turkey on Thanksgiving? 36%. 88 how many calls does the Butterball Turkey line get each year? 1.2 million. 100,000. Mm. And lastly, who is the first video game character featured in the Macy's Day Parade? Mario? Sonic the Hedgehog. Wow. Nice. Good. I think you got two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. What's up with, uh, with, was it Roosevelt you said twice? Yeah, I don't did know. You, did you see his name on the list? And you're like, you got me one of these fucking things. Hmm. Well, let me hit you with some trivia. We'll just we'll just back to back it real quick. All right, uh, Minnesota. All right, I'm David. I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna pounds. hit you with some rapid fire Thanksgiving trivia. Ready? Go. What Thanksgiving vegetable was grown in space? Potato. Bam. Uh, when was the first Thanksgiving football game? 1876. That's exactly right. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, how much of the mm-hmm. Uh, uh, how much did the world's most expensive thanksgiving dinner uh, on record cost uh 11 million dollars Hundred eighty-one thousand. which native american acted as an interpreter squanto correct uh which cities mm, uh according to the guinness book of world records how much does the heaviest ter- mm? Uh, (laughs) what town canceled Thanksgiving because they couldn't make pumpkin pies Uh, somewhere in like uh, Connecticut or something it's Colchester Connecticut you got the exact (laughs) same Uh, what professional football team has played uh, the Detroit Lions Uh, what city is home to the oldest Thanksgiving parade Uh, somewhere in like North Carolina Uh, Philadelphia Uh, yeah fuck them what did President Calvin Coolidge famously receive as a Thanksgiving gift a presidency a live raccoon. I saw uh, that one on there. What's the only area in Australia to celebrate Thanksgiving? Melbourne. Norfolk Island. Uh, what food did the colonists... <clears throat> what area of Massachusetts still looks just like it did in the 17th century? Salem. Oh, come on. Thanksgiving. What state? Massachusetts. Plymouth. There you go. Plymouth. The Rock. Um... What do Thanksgiving and the song Mary Had a Little Lamb have in common? Uh, they were both created by the same woman or something. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is... <clears throat> has Thanksgiving always been celebrated on the fourth Thursday in November? No, not until Abraham Lincoln declared it. 
<laughs> Actually, it was no in 1939. Thanksgiving was celebrated on the third Thursday in November. So the next year, what, Lincoln was? 1939, David. 1939. Oh. Uh, well, I don't know. I wonder what I read. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that was Roosevelt. Ha! <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> uh, a Thanksgiving turkey mix-up inspired what popular meal trend? Oh. Uh, tur turkey Frozen TV dinners. Oh, that's right. Tur turkey was one of the other answers. So a question you're going to ask me? Uh, how many runners participated in America's first turkey trot? Mm, 340. Uh, six. Hmm. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. What happens to the turkeys that are pardoned by the president each year? They live happy lives. That's correct. Do turkeys actually gobble? Yeah. I seen Only it. male turkeys. <laughs> I seen it. <laughs> Where do turkeys get their name? Uh, from the... Uh, whatever country it was, the... Something hen <laughs> no, came no, over no, from no. Turkey. It, from the country Turkey, yeah. Yeah, but it came over as like its name was like the something hen. Let's see. So uh, during the reign of the Ottoman Empire, a bird called the guinea fowl, which bears a striking resemblance to the American turkey, was imported to Europe from its native North Africa because the birds came from Turkish lands. Europeans called the called them the turkey cock and turkey hen. There you go. And then when settlers in America began sending similar looking birds back, it had already stuck. And then last but not least, uh, according to Americans, what's the best part of Thanksgiving? Probably some dumb shit like family. Not family. Friends. Not friends. Is that a good answer? Oh, yeah. Oh, football. Not football. It's leftovers. I guess you wouldn't put it as the best part about Thanksgiving. <clears throat> no, it's the best part. Like about you'd rather the, have family, like friends, and football after Thanksgiving. Yeah. You're not eating leftovers on Thanksgiving. Oh, that's a good point. What's the best part about Thanksgiving? The next day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Well, good for Lincoln. I realized because uh, all I've been fucking listening to and repeating in my head on like drives to work and sitting in the office and everywhere I am has been the the sound that the the baby noise machine makes. Like it's a noise machine, but also like plays songs or like tunes. Okay. And every time the one tune comes on, I think of a different fucking song. And oh, I was this, like, this brings I, me to my next thing, but yes, go ahead. I didn't realize they were all the same thing. So it's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Mm. Like, mm. Doo, mm. Doo, mm. Doo, mm. Doo, mm. yeah. Yeah. But then I'll hear it again and it's Ba Ba Black Sheep. And then I'll hear it again mm. and it's the alphabet. Mm. 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 Twinkle Twinkle is not the same. Those are totally different. As what? As like, tunes yeah as what are the either of the two i said it's like like baba ba black sheep and twinkle twinkle have a different melody ba -ba black sheep i mean it, <laughs> there's a little bit of <laughs> extra in there it's like a remix it's the same as the alphabet well the alphabet and baba ba black sheep have that same little <laughs> remix in the middle not the same as the alphabet either no because that's like Da 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 da. You just started. You just started. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Twinkle, twinkle. Oh yeah. Okay, that is the same. But ba ba, I'm I'm going different because that's da 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 da. That's different. It's the same thing. It just got the couple extra da 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 da's in there. So that's the problem I ran into was. I don't know how the song got stuck in my head. I woke up one morning. Actually, it was this past Sunday. I woke up and this this beat, this tune was in my head. And I couldn't remember. The song had like da-da-da's or like ba ba bas in it or something along those lines. And I spent, David, probably an hour, no joke, of just like talking to Siri, humming to Siri, using that, what's that app called? Um, Shazam? Shazam, singing Googling, it. singing it. I didn't really know the words, though. I just kind of knew, like, the tone and the beat. <laughs> so you opened up Shazam and went, ah. Yes, dude. I, and, I was, and I was sitting in my kitchen, 
like so frustrated, bent over the counter, just like screaming and singing at my phone. And I was like, if anyone were to walk in and I'm just like, and like, I sounded like Randy Marsh, like coming up with a Lord song. Yeah. I, have Lord, no, no. Okay. I was, I was like, fuck, I'm done. I'm giving up. I started doing stuff, doing this. And then I was like, all right, let me watch uh NFL countdown. I turn on NFL countdown. I turn it on. And a commercial comes on, and the first commercial is a Taco Bell commercial that was using the song no as shit. its fucking like like theme, like to the commercial. And I was like, uh, that, uh, uh, I googled the words because they were singing. I was like, yeah, 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 that's it, that's the song. And I finally, finally found it. And it was it was Flagpole Sitta by Harvey Danger. Do you know that song? Yeah. I think that was on a now CD I had. And it was like. So that's it right there. Yeah. yeah so in my like phone, I'm going, I'm two. going. Da, 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 da. And the phone's going, is it this? And I'm like, no, that's not fucking it. <laughs> and I, I don't know if like, cause I fall asleep listening to a podcast on YouTube on my phone and I don't so know if maybe, maybe a commercial, commercial came on, on there. Yeah. And then I woke up going that songs in my head it had to be, dude. But the fact that it came on like 10 minutes right, later yeah. on a TV commercial, I was blown away. I was blown away. I was like, ah, ah, ah. and I was, I can't wait to talk about this on the podcast. Like, no, one, ah, like it was bugging me so much. That's bizarre. It was. Hey, it was my first one that I didn't do on purpose. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's a potential episode title, too. Mm. Did you see today's episode title? I thought about not doing it. I did, and I was like, mm, a little risky click there. A little risk. Risky. That's okay. So I that was my goddamn see. hour. That's great. I like that. Sunday morning. Ugh. Did you kind of feel but, like you like wasted an hour? I did like you, because I didn't do anything but that. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't just, like, like sat down and start laundry or do dishes. I didn't do anything because yeah. I was so determined. Like, I know how this fucking song goes. I just don't know the words. I'm trying to find this. Uh, I think I told you about it. One of these episodes, I guess it's not a website anymore. I used to use that. So it was like songtap.com and you like tap the beat on your space bo- space bar. It gave me every song in the world, and I was Except like, okay, new one. Apple AI. It's got it. Nope. <laughs> yeah. But such a fulfilling feeling. Yeah. I was like, like I rose up off the couch. I was like, uh, oh, wha- yeah. wha- wha- <laughs> where's the fuck's my phone? I got to Google these words before I forget them. And I, oh, man. It was just, it was a great feeling. And <laughs> I also remember thinking like, Oh my God, it's going to be a great day. Ravens are going to win. This is going to be, this is just going to be a great day. That ended. It's a shitty day. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that song. <laughs> I, I wasted an hour looking for this fucking song. <sighs> Ravens shit Man. the bed. Tell you what. Tell me. They shit the bed. Shit the bed. Um, they shit the bed. I got our number. Well, you got Ben's number right now. Nine one one seven. <laughs> I'll say nine one one. Help! <laughs> I'm not even gonna think about that. I'm wearing this. Can't even do it. So let's hammer out some Thanksgiving. So um, the question that I came up with that I think is a a good question for this time of year is why turkey? Why turkey on Thanksgiving? Do you have you through researching for your topics this week? Have you come across like why turkey is the most popular dish for Thanksgiving? I feel like I did, but I was like, oh, that's dumb. I was like, that wouldn't be fun to talk about, but I could also be making that up. Okay. I mean, I have, a f- I have one, two, three, four, five. They've listed seven reasons. Kind oh, of, so there's not like an actual reason. Cult. Yeah. There's not like this, this is why, but there's a lot of like, oh, that makes sense. Answers. Okay. What you got? So, uh, why turkey on Thanksgiving? Uh, plentifulness. Uh, turkeys were plentiful in colonial America, with an estimated 10 million in the country when the Europeans arrived. Uh, we've got convenience. Turkeys were raised primarily for their meat, so they were readily available for slaughter on family farms. 
size, a single turkey could feed a family. Uh, low cost turkeys were a cheap option for large gatherings. Um, Charles Dickens, a Christmas Carol. Some credit the 1843 novel with popularizing the idea of turkey as a holiday meal. In the story, Ebenezer Scrooge replaces the Cratchit family's goose with a turkey. Um, native to North America, turkeys were already living on people's properties, making them convenient. And the last one is popularity of Sarah Jose- Josepha Hale. Hale's magazine... Godie's Lady Book often published turkey recipes, and sh- she described Thanksgiving a Thanksgiving feast featuring turkey in her 1827 novel, Northwood, A Tale of New England. So a little bit of popularized stories between A Christmas Carol and The Tale of New England. So when Plus was, the, just the convenience of... When was Charles Dickens? 1843. Hmm. And then it was, what, 26 years later, Lincoln? No, 25 years later, Lincoln? Something like that. 20. We'll call it 20. You, you, I know you ain't asking me. No, he would have been dead. We'll call it 20. Um, so maybe that maybe that, that mixture of popular... Uh, what's the word? It's not media when it's a, back in the day and it's a book. Just popular story. Let's go with literature. Me, literature. Hey, <laughs> thanks, Eric. <laughs> Emblazon. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I, I, yeah, I think that's a, yeah. So there's your why, why turkey. Okay. Yeah. Why you eating turkey? I read about it in, in a, a book. book. <laughs> huh. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't know. I, I never thought about it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like reading all those yeah. reasons, it makes sense. I feel like a I lot think, of them said the same thing, just in different words. Uh, Yeah, kind of, sort of. Like I think the literature part to me is like... And what was like plentifulness? Size, like low cost, convenience, plentifulness. Yeah. Um, all those mixed in with, I mean, what are you doing in the 1800s? You don't have, you're reading fucking books and a Christmas Carol, probably one of the most to me is the most, is the best Christmas story ever told. Is that the best way of saying it? the best Christmas, not, not the Christmas story. No, I think a Christmas Carol is like creme de la creme. Chris Delamis. That's all I got. <laughs> is, is that a person? Chris, Chris Delamus? De, Chris, Chris De La, probably. Chris Rudd? I hope what do you think not. he's doing? What do you think Chris Rudd's doing right now? Getting I'm going to say he's like, he has like seven kids. He's probably in jail, honestly. Mm, with seven kids at home. With, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris, if you're listening, hey, how's it going, man? <laughs> <laughs> if he's listening, I got to start putting some Spanish subtitles in. <laughs> yeah. I ever tell you about the time... uh uh, I don't remember whose class it was because the teacher, like the teacher was pregnant. So they weren't there, but for like, but a month of the school year. So there was like a sub the whole time. I forgot you were in those kind of classes with, with the ruds of the world. Yeah. So I, I just, I just, story. I just pass him the hallway and be like, Oh my God, that guy has a tattoo. Oh my God. <laughs> don't look at him. <laughs> he had that slider phone too. Yeah. He was cool. um, so yeah, I'm sitting in this, this social studies class and the subs up there talking about who fucking knows what. And it was like Maya Angelou, like he's in social studies. Oh, uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, probably something like that. Yeah. Uh, so like he was here, the teacher was here and then it was like some of the class here, some of the class here, some of the class here. And for your audio listeners, uh, it's like a square basically. Cool. <laughs> that's, that's all <laughs> you I could got. said that too. You didn't have to. Well, anyways, anyways, so I sat right next to the window, Chris, Rudd sat right next to me and the teacher's up there talking about God, no Borophil probably mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and fucking out of nowhere, Jeff Wood like puts his hands on my desk and like reaches his neck up over and looks out the window. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And he's like, 
Hey, Chris, immigration's here for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Oh my god! Just like in the middle of class, like no. unsolicited, the dudes up there talk about fucking Abraham Lincoln, and Jeff Wood goes, "Chris, immigration's here for you." Like, oh. Jesus Christ! Like, oh man, what kind that of was that? And I laughed and got a detention, and I was absolutely. like, "Absolutely, I'm not absolutely. going to that." And he's like, "Well, you're getting it," and I was like, "Cool, I'm cool. gonna be there." Yeah, <laughs> right, right. It's the first thing that anytime I got in trouble in school, the first thing that went through my head was, "What would my dad think?" Because he's gonna be the one to yell at me. So if I tell this dude I'm not going, my dad hears the explanation. I was like, "No, my dad's gonna be like, fuck this guy." So I was like, "I ain't going to that shit." <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> fuck him. What's your um? No, I guess I already know the answer. I guess your go-to thing that you make every year is your sweet potato casserole, right? And stuffing. And stuffing. And your sweet potato casserole is just a lot of brown sugar, vanilla, and butter, and, and a top cinnamon, of marshmallow. Marshmallows, and marshmallows, yeah. Have a good day. Yeah. Uh, um, some milk. Well, maybe maybe we'll, we'll try to, um, when I'm there, maybe we'll try to play with, you know, we discussed the adult milkshake thing. Maybe we'll try to play with an adult sweet potato pie milkshake because we won't need much because you know we're going to have leftovers. You got to be careful saying play with an adult when you're wearing that jersey. Hey, add one to the ticker. <laughs> ding. ding. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you um, just got to get, uh, we'll have to go back and watch that episode again to see what uh, whatever liquor we talked about. Yeah, I mean, all we'll need is vanilla ice cream, your sweet potato casserole, and then I think we talked about like a no, like a marshmallow whiskey, or no, there was a, or was it like a pecan whiskey or something? No, or, I don't remember. Would a cinnamon whiskey be good in there? Not like a Fireball, but like a true cinnamon whiskey. I don't know. Whatever we talked about was like all right. We we'll have to that. research it. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to. Um, we'll have to do some digging because I think that'd be a good idea because they ended up doing um, they ended up doing apple pie for this month an apple pie at all milkshake, which I think would be very tasty, but also pretty simple to put together. Yeah. Yeah. But if, and that's like, if we can come up with a sweet potato one, that's actually really good, which I think it would be as sweet because your sweet potato casserole is like dessert. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, a vegetable anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not, it's, uh, it's good sugar. for you. By yeah, it's means. pure sugar. It's, it's too good. Would you say that's like your favorite leftover? Mm. Like if you had to pick, well, I wouldn't say one because I think mine would be making that sandwich of leftovers, turkey, cranberry stuffing, gravy, all on some bread and just have a good day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I have a favorite. I just, I want my plate to look like it did the day before. Okay. So, like, so kind of the same. I just put mine on a sandwich and yeah, you there's nothing I'd be like, up. I just want a, an entire plate of that. Okay. I don't think so. Is Pumpkin it, pie. is it stuffing or dressing? It's dressing if it's not in the turkey, right? Is that, am I it's, making that up? No, but it's stuffing. Like everyone calls it stuff. No one says, can I have some dressing? Yeah. Hey, like, can yep. you pass some dressing? Hand the ranch? Yeah. Like nobody does that, right? Yeah. Like who calls it dressing? Idiots. Well, I, I can, I can see families like <laughs> they're at the, um, yeah. Can you pass the stuffing? Um, actually <clears throat> <laughs> got a little tape around his yeah, glasses. Um, it's not, um, stuffing cause it wasn't stuffed inside the Turkey that is actually dressing. And they're all like, thanks Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, like, I'm going to stuff this up your ass if you don't yeah. shut up. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. He's like, oh, you're welcome. Of course. Can you pass the dressing, please? Thank you. <laughs> Mike. So you did that, and I immediately thought of... Uh, Dilbert? No, uh, Kevin McAllister's like, mm. cousin. You're such a disease, that kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get to sleep in me, with me in my bed. Oh, or oh, oh, oh. He says. <laughs> he's just chugging his Cokes. Yeah. <laughs> or his Pepsis or whatever he's got. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out why. So my headphones have like the L and the R for left and right. <laughs> and there's Braille to tell you which one's which. They can why? hear, they just can't see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Braille's for blind people. I forgot. 
<laughs> uh, Eric, you have your way with that one. Uh, and cu- well, there's a lot of good traditions, and I think we should do a draft of our favorite Thanksgiving traditions. What do you think? Is it tradition, though? I, just, I don't think genocide is a tradition. Uh, all right. Our favorite uh, parts, th- uh, things, th- stuff about Thanksgiving. No, we're just doing the Thanksgiving draft. Things that make Thanksgiving Thanksgiving. <laughs> that, that'd that be half the short right there. So you want to try one more time? We're going to do the Thanksgiving draft. Those things that make Thanksgiving Thanksgiving. <sighs> I got to hit you with some bad news. I go first. Hmm. Well, I'll just delete that. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, David. Well, you get the first pick, you bastard, in the Thanksgiving draft. What do you think? It was your idea. I was going to have you blind rank Thanksgiving things. And you said draft, yeah. so. Yeah. Well, with my first pick in the Thanksgiving draft, I'm going to take football. Oh. Okay. No. Well, with uh, my... Hit, con- hit control Z. <laughs> my first pick, um, I don't know if we're going to generalize it or put it together, but I was I was going to take turkey slash like dinner, like the meal, like eating. Should I, I just call it dinner I, or should I no, say turkey? I'd call it turkey. Okay. So, yeah, turkey. Oh, wait, because you're going to take dinner? <laughs> no, because I have like four things that are dinner. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So turkey. Turkey's, yeah. it's Thanksgiving. Turkey. Bam. 88% of us eat it. Bam. That's what they say. It's Three and a half back. million of us. A little, little call back there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, with my second pick in the Thanksgiving draft, I'm going to take family and friends. Damn it. That was my pick, David. Um, well, I guess it wasn't. It was yours. Um it's a good pick. I'm going to go second overall. I'm going to take this is my second pick in the Thanksgiving draft. I'm going to go with, you know what? I'm going to go with naps, 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 and, and that, that post dinner. Would that be along the same lines as food coma? Yes. All right. I'll yes. delete that. All right, well, with my third pick, I'm going to take pumpkin pie. Okay. I like that. Um, I'm going to stay in the food realm, but I'm going to go with a more generalized food realm. And we already talked about it. My third pick, I'm going leftovers, baby. Pew, 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 pew. I have leftovers for days. Let me delete that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, with my fourth pick, I'm going to take time off of work oh i did not have that that's pretty good though people love that um okay so my fourth pick then in that case i'm gonna go with um the season i'm gonna say autumn and just like the fall and and just either all the leaves are already gone or they're still hanging on you're in your hoodies and you're it's cold out just autumn taking autumn we already did the basic white girl draft. I, look, I got my Uggs on right now. Like, I'm <laughs> going to get some Starbucks and listen to the Taylor bitch. Okay. All right. Well, with my last pick, I'm going to go with some nostalgia, and I'm going to take Breaking the Wishbone. Oh, that's a good one. I also have never done one. it once. Oh. oh. Hmm. Okay. I don't think I've ever done it. Um... Oh boy. Last but not least. Um fifth pick. Last pick. Thanksgiving draft. Uh, I'm gonna go with can I just group it together and say pilgrims and Indians? Go for it. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say pilgrims and Native Americans as my last pick. What a what about them? You know, they they <laughs> feasted together and had the first ever not holiday, but marked the uh, aside from Charles Dickens and his Christmas Carol, the first ever gathering and eating of food because they didn't have turkey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. As a bringing together of 
Thanks for your land. <laughs> and your Genocide. women and your and your food. <laughs> okay. And, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not mad at it. Um, I think I pretty much or we collectively pretty much hit everything. The only thing I think I had that we didn't say I had a lot was, of sides. I had like mashed potatoes and stuff. Yeah, I had and, stuffing, the Macy's Day parade, and Black Friday. Yeah, I had Black Friday, but I was like, eh, no one's like, oh, it's Thanksgiving. Well, maybe like 20 years ago. Yeah. But now with online shopping, no one gives a shit about Black Friday. Yeah. Well, my thought was all Fridays matter. So, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, let me get my turkey's beak here. <laughs> Do what? Well, speaking of Black Friday, mm-hmm. I have some uh, crazy Black Friday horror stories if you want to hear a couple of these. Yeah, I, I think the first thing that comes to mind would be like people getting like uh, like trampled and like stepped on and dying and that kind of thing. And then people like fighting over stuff and shooting each other and that kind of stuff. That's that's about all I can come up with, though. Yeah, that's, that's like uh, two of them. Okay. Yeah. So we'll start with the uh, the worst first, I guess. Uh, the curse of being first was an employee trampled to death. Walmart features quite a bit in our Black Friday horror stories, but none worse than this one. In 2008, a Walmart employee was trampled to death after a mob of Black Friday shoppers broke through the doors and rushed the store. Four shoppers, including a pregnant woman, were also injured. Jesus. All right, this one. <laughs> It began as any other Black Friday rush, but in 2008 at a Toys R Us in Palm Desert, California, something went terribly wrong. Two women began throwing verbal jabs and then actual jabs in the store's electronics department. Then the two men they were with began fighting and drew handguns. As the other shoppers scrambled to safety, the men turned Toys R Us into a scene from the Old West. They chased each other down the store aisles, firing and killing each other, but no one else. (laughs) Must have been that that Tickle Me Elmo, man. (laughs) Gotta have it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that tickles. It tickles. This one's called Sucker Punched at Sears. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a movie. Speaking of, I don't know how uh how much you examine the thumbnail, but uh the episode font was Sears. Oh, okay. I was wondering what that was. No, I examined it pretty good and I was like did you notice you that re- that the entire really... thumbnail was all five things you yeah, hate? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was I uh I was very impressed by the Taylor Swift edit. It was also yeah. really weird to see her in Steelers stuff, but no, it was really good. You had the time management in the background and Mahomes was holding up the uh the feminism <laughs> thing and yeah, it was good. It was really good. Good, glad you liked it. All right, so while waiting in line at a San Antonio, Texas Sears at 9 p.m. Thanksgiving night in 2012, a shopper tried to cut in line. When another man objected, the offending line hopper punched him in the face. The man who took the sucker punch pulled out a handgun, a move he later said he made in self-defense. The line cutter fled. Police took the gun owner into custody but released him, saying he was within his right as he had concealed handgun permit. He was asked to leave the Sears but given a store voucher for his next visit. Amazingly, <laughs> shopping resumed just 10 minutes after the incident. <laughs> the store voucher. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. All right, I have two more. I like this one. I haven't read this one yet, so I'll save the one I did read for last. Okay. This one's called pepper spray. Ooh. Here's one way to make sure you get your hands on the goodies. Keep the rest of the crowd away with some pepper spray. That's what one woman did in her bid to snag a video game console on sale at a Walmart in 2011. She sprayed about 10 fellow Black Friday shoppers and somehow was able to pay for her items and leave without being stopped. Damn. Yeah, I just like this, please. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone behind her is just like, ah, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. This one's called ousted from Old Navy. Hmm. Unfortunately, shoplifters aren't a rarity, but when two women decided to steal goods from an Old Navy in Holland Township, Michigan, on Black Friday in 2012, they took it a step further. The shoplifters were stopped by a store detective in an adjacent parking lot after exiting the store with their stolen items. The detective took the goods, and the pair fled to a nearby vehicle, but they didn't go far. As the officer attempted to write down their license plate, they circled back. One of the women pulled a gun, held up the detective, and seized the merchandise. But not for long, police caught the women and arrested them while they were left holding the proverbial bag. (laughs) 
Well, do you have any like memorable Thanksgiving, like this one thing stands out, like this one Thanksgiving, this happened kind of moments like to you personally? Mm, I remember we were at my grandmother's house for Thanksgiving and uh, Chris Chambers had like 12 catches for 240 yards and three touchdowns. <laughs> Okay. And we lost like 42 to seven. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's pretty memorable. The fact that you, Chris Chambers, as a name drop. Beatler looking for Chambers, throwing deep down the left side. He's got him. Diving catch. Touchdown. A magnificent play fake by Beatler. Looking deep, throws it short. Caught by Chambers at the 20. Beatler and Chambers rock the NFL's best defense for 23 first half points. Plus offensive onslaught by the Dolphins today. Uh, Randy Moss's rookie year on Thanksgiving, they played us. He had three catches for 163 yards and three touchdowns. But nothing happened to like you, like this this crazy Thanksgiving, like this thing happened mm-hmm. like with a family member or like a... I don't think so. No, nothing. Okay. I'd have to think about it. Did you have one? Um... I guess it was Thanksgiving when we found out that I have uh, that leg issue, my uh, popliteal artery entrapment syndrome, as the doctor called it at Johns Hopkins. Um, no, we were out. We were out walking in the woods. We'd always go on a walk um, with our friends, and we always went to their house. Um, and I was like, oh, I was probably like eight-ish years old. Mom, my leg hurts. My leg hurts. Oh, you'll be fine. You know, keep walking. This and that, and and. Finally, I convinced my friend's dad to give me a piggyback ride the rest of the way home. And then we got back to the house. And when we took off, when I took off my shoes and my sock, my foot was like ghost white, like completely drained of blood. And they were like, oh, that's, uh, that's not, not normal. <laughs> that's not normal. I was like, yeah, it hurt. I was, I was telling you, they're like, you'll be fine. Just keep walking. And I'm back there like Quasimodo, like dragging <laughs> my leg, like, all right, I'm coming. I'm coming. So, yeah, that's the one thing that sticks out to me for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Show some holiday spirit and thank the Poor Choices Show for giving you all some laughs by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. Otherwise, I'll lay the smack down on your candy asses. Now back to those two jabronis. We're going to do how these NBA teams got their names, the Central Division. In this division is the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Detroit Pistons, the Indiana Pacers, the Chicago Bulls, and the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay. I'm ready. We'll start with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Ugh, I don't know. Um, they're Cavaliers of their industry. I'm not sure what industry Cleveland has. I guess like toilet paper. I don't know. Uh, or, or, or um, Lake Erie used to be host to a lot of pirates and they named their team after those Cavaliers on the, on the, on the Lake of Erie that would steal. In 1970, Cleveland <laughs> held a contest to determine their team name, settling on Cavaliers, Jays, Foresters, Towers, and Presidents as the five finalists. Cavaliers eventually won the vote and they've been playing under that name ever since. Boo. Next is the Detroit Pistons. I mean, that's obvious, I think, because, you know, the car industry up there and the factories and there's pistons and cars. It is, but it isn't. Okay. Detroit's team, an NBL team, was originally founded in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and known as the Fort Wayne Zoller Pistons after owner Frank Zoller. Zoller owned a factory that manufactured pistons for various engines, thus the pistons name was born. Hmm. Okay. And then after moving to Detroit, obviously, that made sense, so... Yeah, why not? That's that and no harm done. (laughs) That's another one I feel like I'm going to fit in every episode. I like it. All right, the next one, the Indiana Pacers. Um, Man, I ain't got a clue. Um, There's a racetrack there to keep pace. That's all I got. I don't know. Pretty big racetrack there, if you ask me. The Indiana Pacers franchise, founded in 1967, was actually originally an ABA franchise. The name Pacers was decided by the team's original group of investors. According to attorney Richard Tinkman, the name was chosen because of Indiana's history with harness racing Pacers, as well as the pace car used during the Indy 500. Oh, uh, that one makes a lot more sense. <laughs> That's why I said a big, yep. Mm-hmm. Member? Okay, yeah. Um, oh, fuck Eric, so we'll do them last. Next one is the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, 
That's that's hunting country up there. You got some bucks. You got some. Mm-hmm, there, mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Close. So, de- deer. Okay. <laughs> the, ci- the city of Milwaukee had a name the team contest in 1968. And of the 10,000 plus entries, Bucks was chosen as the team's name moving forward. Team officials felt that out of all the entries, Bucks most closely reflected the fish and game mentality of the region. As animals go, Bucks is a pretty decent team name. You could definitely do worse. Yeah. Okay. But you had to do it. You had to do a fan poll to get the name Bucks. Come on. At least like I'm kind of okay with the name, the team contest when like the winner is chosen because of like a reason they should have went with that to begin with. Like that was chosen right. because of the was, was, fish and game um, mentality. Was the Brewers a, a poll, a fan based decision, mm. or was that? I don't think it was, if I remember correctly. I think they did a fan vote, but was that the one where the owner was like, "Nah, fuck all these. We're going with Brewers." No, that was the Rockies. That's right. That was the Rockies. I don't remember. I don't know. All right. The last one, the Chicago Bulls. Um, they do a lot of that. Uh, Toro, Toro. Uh, you know, in the Chicago, conqu- the Conquistadors and stuff. It's not the Santa Fe Bulls. <laughs> I'm going to go with a uh, fan vote. Okay. Chicago had a strong meatpacking tradition back in 1966, and team owner Richard Klein was kicking around names like the Matadors or. Toradors for his new franchise. When he approached his family with his ideas for the team name, his little son Mark said, Dad, that's a bunch of bull. Of course, Klein decided to take the bull's name and run with it. And the rest is ancient history. And what year was that? 1966. And the kid said, that's bull? Man, that kid would have been thrown out the window. You don't talk to your parents like that in the 60s? Get out of here. <laughs> it was very Mr. Keys of you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, there you go. There's the okay. NBA Central. And that's that. <laughs> no harm done. <laughs> Might have been watching me some Potter tonight. I like that idea. It's a good idea. Did you end up watching Angels in the Outfield after last recording? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. It was so good. So see good. Not, see not Hopper. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I always forget fucking Matthew McConaughey is like an outfielder. I'm like, oh. You forgot after we talked about it and went and watched it? Oh, we did talk about it, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, because you were trying to figure out if it was Hopper, and you were like, oh, I forgot Matthew McConaughey's in this. That could happen. And then you went and watched it, and you forgot again? the same thing. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> he did a lot of weird shit before he got famous. <sighs> All right, JP, let's go on to the next one. That could happen. It could happen. All right, you ready for this game? Yeah. This game is called Explain a Film Plot Poorly. Okay. So you're going to explain a film plot so you're gonna think you picked up poorly and I mean guess it <laughs> <laughs> you messing up my pitch <laughs> so I'm going to poorly explain a film plot and you're gonna try to guess the movie I like that idea okay I tested some of these out with Kayla last night she did she did better than I thought she would okay okay some are some are easy I'm intrigued to uh, see how poorly you're explaining these like uh, so bad guy it was, dead it was chat GPT <laughs> and I thought that if I could get it right away, then you would definitely get it. So I told it to okay. make it a little less. But they're all like one, obvious. two sentences. So the okay. first one's going to be very obvious, but it's Got funny. It. So I kept it in. <laughs> okay. All right. The first one, a vacationing rich girl ditches her fiance for a broke artist she just met, has some steamy sex and discovers furniture isn't buoyant as her boyfriend turns into a popsicle. Wait, you said it was going to be obvious? Yeah. Could you read it one more time? A vacationing rich girl ditches her fiance for a broke artist she just met, has some steamy sex, and discovers furniture isn't buoyant as her boyfriend turns into a popsicle. Oh, Kayla got this one right away. (laughs) I thought those last few were a dead giveaway. Her boyfriend turns into a popsicle? Discovers furniture isn't buoyant as her boyfriend turns into a popsicle. So like chair in a pool? No, that was Asha's house. Uh, oof. You want the whole thing one more time? Yeah. A vacationing rich girl ditches her fiance for a broke artist she just met, 
has some steamy sex and discovers furniture isn't buoyant as her boyfriend turns into a popsicle. Broke artist. I don't, I literally nothing comes to mind. It's the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest thing. You just said that, you know what movie I watched two days ago? The Titanic. <laughs> the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> and you still didn't get it. Jesus. I'm disappointed. I'm, I was thinking, I don't know. I just wasn't thinking like that realm as far as like older setting kind of, I was thinking like, is it like clueless or like mean girls or like, you, yeah. Okay. okay. That's, that's really good. Okay. Shit. I'm not going to be good at this. All right. Good. Eh, okay. We'll see. All right. The next one, a kid with a knack for breaking the rules accidentally adopts a bird, makes a bunch of weird friends and wins a rock by playing a game of chess against a squatter. Harry Potter. It is. And the Sorcerer's wow. Stone. Okay. A squatter. <laughs> I guess that's one way to call Voldemort. It's a squatter. <laughs> Dude's living in my head rent free. Like, come on. <laughs> uh, all right. The next one. A recluse reluctantly teams up with an annoying talker to crash a wedding only to fall for someone way out of his league who has a big secret of her own. Oh, that's Shrek. Good job. Yeah. Okay. This one's kind of tough. It's not, but it is. Okay. All right, the next one. A jealous coworker tries to sabotage the new guy at the office, but they both end up lost and have to hitchhike their way back before their boss moves away. I was thinking like office space or like like the hangover, uh, horrible bosses. Uh, Don't think of it so literally. Can I get it one more time? A jealous coworker tries to sabotage the new guy at the office, but they both end up lost and have to hitchhike their way back before their boss moves away. Coworkers hitchhike. I got nothing. It's Toy Story. Oh God, I would never would have got there. <laughs> no, yeah, way. that one was that one was tough. But then once you know and you read it, you're like, okay, mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, this one I think you'll get. Okay. The next one. A rich guy's theme park startup goes off the rails when his employees forget to lock the gates and the guests realize they're lower on the food chain than expected. Is that like night at the museum? Put emphasis on lower on the food chain. Oh, it's Jurassic Park. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, rich guy's theme park. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, I want to save that one for last. All right, the next one. A guy with eyeliner teams up with a blacksmith to fight glowing skeletons, steal a coin, and rescue a woman who probably regrets wearing such a heavy dress to the beach. What? Um, oh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. There you go. Yeah, yeah. okay. Exactly. First, <laughs> a guy with eyeliner I thought would be a dead giveaway. Mm-hmm. That's that's what gave it to me, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the dress that's too that. heavy to the beach. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny. All right, the next one. A farmer leaves his dusty hometown to go on a really long work trip, gets stuck in a giant library, and uses gravity to help his daughter with her homework. Oh, Interstellar. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right, I got two more. Mm Mm-hmm. An overprotective single dad teams up with a forgetful acquaintance to track down his rebellious kid who's been kidnapped and is stuck in a glass prison with a bunch of weird roommates. Taken? Not even remotely close. (laughs) (laughs) Can I get it one more time? An overprotective single dad teams up with a forgetful acquaintance to track down his rebellious kid who's been kidnapped and is stuck in a glass prison with a bunch of weird roommates. Is it like an animal movie? Mm Mm-hmm. That's not Lion King because they don't actually like get put in. Put some emphasis on the glass prison. And the forgetful acquaintance. Like when I think of glass prison, I'm like, all right, they're in a zoo. It's not glass. That's iron. Yeah. It's an animal movie. Animated animal movie. Mm -hmm. Used to have one of these glass prisons. Oh, Finding Nemo. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. I forget. I gotcha. I gotcha. Got it. All right. And the last one. (laughs) A group of underqualified scientists and a wannabe firefighter team up to stop some goo from turning into a giant butt-shaped monster that's really bad for the ecosystem. (laughs) Is it Ghostbusters? (laughs) No. Oh. It's an Us movie. 
Flubber? No. We, what have we ever talked about Flubber? <laughs> <laughs> Are you just saying because we're fat? <laughs> I just, you know. Wait, it's an Us movie? Can I get it one more time? A group of underqualified scientists and a wannabe firefighter team up to stop some goo from turning into a giant butt-shaped monster that's really bad for the ecosystem. Oh, evolution. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> it was well, fun. Just, I, was, I was very excited for that. Where are we going to get 40 tons of head and shoulders? Oh, we can get you that. <laughs> yeah, we can get you that. No problem. <laughs> uh, before that, it was like, uh, where are we going to get 40,000 pounds of selenium? Yeah. yeah. Head and shoulders. What? No, 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 no. It's where can we get that 40,000 pounds? He goes, oh, we can get that for you. No problem. He's oh, like, yeah. What? He's like, yeah. How are you going to get 40,000 in, pounds of yeah. in head and shoulders? Head and shoulders. <laughs> I believe cacaw, cacaw, and tookie, tookie don't work. <laughs> if anyone has not seen Evolution, uh, go watch that movie immediately. Yeah, it's a great bad movie. It's a great bad movie. <laughs> well, if you don't have an Ask Reddit yet, you want to talk about beer while you get it? Um, okay. I'll talk about my beer. <laughs> <laughs> For those listening, uh, I'm drinking a well, this week, uh, Ultra. <laughs> our poor choice. Mm-hmm. So this week, my poor choice is from Energy City Brewing out of, mm, I feel like we've had a lot of this one. Is it stuffing flavored? No. A sour gravy beer, perhaps? That sounds disgusting. Pumpkin pie? I don't know where it's from. Okay. Uh, it's a bistro. Pineapple, strawberry, habanero, sour. I thought you were going to go with something uh, themed towards the holiday, but that sounds awesome. I feel like all the holiday beer is Halloween beer. Just pumpkin mm. this and... Yeah, you could have probably found something like pecan or apple pie or... You probably could have found not Michelob Ultra. But I did. I found it. There you go. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> Ta-da. And that's that. Um, <laughs> it's good. I'll give it a I'll give it an eight. Oh, S- six. Do you have enough to last you until n- tomorrow when I'm there for me to taste it? Tomorrow in quotes. Um, no, but I have enough beer to occupy myself in the meantime. If you were wanting to try it, I'd like to try it. Sounds really good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. No cream. <laughs> so what? What would you rate an ultra? Mm. Got to be above an eight because you bought uh, me like a like a nine nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's crazy because you buy ultra all the time and half of the shit I've ranked or graded less than an eight. I'd much rather have than ultra. I love Ultra. Yeah. It's so good. Huh. It's delicious. Like I, have, I have you to thank for that. You're welcome. You remember when I moved to Florida and all I dr- drunk, all I drunk was Bud Light? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're like, nah, try this. I was like, all right. Yeah. I didn't stop trying it. <laughs> Still trying it. <laughs> Still trying it. Still trying to figure out if I like it or not. Oh, it's good. Yeah. All right. Did you find something? Well, that was, uh, how about this? Uh, my ask credit this week is what's the worst pain you've ever experienced? Pepper spray. Pepper spray. Oh, that's a good one. And it's not even like it's a 10 out of 10 on the pain scale, but it's yeah. also eight hours of that pain. Yeah. It sounds like horrible. You get kicked in the nuts and you're like, man, that sucks. But for like an hour, that sounds horrible. Cool. And not that, uh, I feel like how quickly I said pepper spray makes me sound like Roethlisberger, but <laughs> ding. no, from the military because our yeah. fucking new commander, the first commander I had there was like, if you want to carry it, you have to do it. And I was mm-hmm. like, cool, I'm not carrying pepper spray. <laughs> Next commander came and was like, everybody's doing fucking it. doing it. And I was like, son of a bitch. Fuck. Uh, but sir, my uh, previous commander had told me I don't have to if I'm not going to. And- he said, yeah, get in line. <laughs> yeah, the worst part is when you get back and you take a shower 
Did you have to do anything after you got pepper sprayed? Like, hey, oh, could, yeah, run yeah. a whole fucking... Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. They give you those little rubber fucking uh, whatever the hell they're called, and you got to go beat someone and, like, fake arrest them. And, ah, oh, dude, get back, and you're supposed to shower like a chick. Like, mm-hmm. backwards wash your hair. I did it forwards, and uh, you can oh, probably right to your balls? Oh. oh. Yeah. Right to the pee hole. miserable. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's see. I have here, uh, I had to have a toe amputated because of diabetes and during the process, they must have cut such irritated a nerve. Yeah. It sounds real bad. Aren't you like knocked out for that? Let's see. It was excruciating. Literally no pain meds worked at all. Lasted almost a month and seriously thought about killing myself. Damn. Um, okay. this person said that is totally hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, this one, which I've heard is crazy, uh, kidney stones. Mm. I've heard are, I mean, they'll, they'll drop a, they'll drop the biggest, baddest dude to his knees and have him in tears. Yeah. yeah Paul, fr- Paul used to have them and, uh, it can't be that bad because he got them from drinking and he would go piss one out and come back and keep drinking. So I think it that obviously depends on like the size of the stone and, and, and all that stuff. Cause you could have little baby stones in there, but. There can be some that, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got pancreatitis. Yeah, it sounds pretty bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. A cluster headache that lasted several minutes. Technically, it's called a complex migraine. I ended up on the ground, uh, writhing in pain so hard that I hurt myself on the ground. Hmm. Yeah. Length? He probably just ate ice cream. Oh, too that fast. was his intensity pain. And he said length. Oh, God, this is getting real dark. He said, losing my two daughters. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Get out of the emotional bullshit. Let's see. Uh, Stage three cancer. This might not have been a good one to do. I don't know if that hurts. In 1980, I was working as an industrial millwright at an aluminum smelter. I was told to remove the valve stem off a hot 600 degree, six inch terminal line. Should I just say thermal? I don't know. Line was supposed to be empty. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Last bolt rugged on the handle and I'm tugged, tugged on the handle and a hot oil sprayed all over me. 22% second degree and third degree burns. Ooh. 22%. What does that mean? Like his like body, 22%, 22% of his body uh, was covered in second, third degree burns. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of really depressing ones here. Real depressing. Uh, kidney stones again. Fuck that. Pancreatitis again. Uh, kidney stones again. <laughs> No garage door spring or uh, nothing beats a toothache. <laughs> I disagree with a lot of these. <laughs> oh man. Uh, getting an IUD. I thought I knew about pain before that. Now I see even that is just barely scratching the surface. Hmm. Uh, Probably hurts less than childbirth though. Let's see. I've had a vaginal birth and a C-section getting my IUD was worse than both. Hmm. I take that back. <laughs> uh, Ectopic pregnancy burst. Ectopic. Ectopic. We'll go with that. Pregnancy burst. <laughs> they said it was the size of a sauce ball. Softball. Sauce ball. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you put it on your spaghetti. <laughs> a sauce ball. Yeah. <laughs> got it. An inflamed cyst. Uh, got another cluster headaches. Torn ACL. Meniscus. Uh, or ACL. Inflamed ear, uh, appendicitis. Heard that's really bad too. Uh, stomach ulcers. So, inflamed cyst sounds like sounds like you're making fun of like one of those things that doesn't know what gender it is. <laughs> Ovarian cyst rupture. Yeah, yeah, that's normal. Not for me, but walking into a trailer hitch. <laughs> okay, cool. Well. This week on my Ask Reddit, I have what is the funniest urban dictionary definition. So what I what I wanted to do before I resorted to Ask Reddit was uh, just find some funny ones and have you guess them. So I'm still going to have you guess what they deem to be the funniest. Okay. Okay. Do you have one? I have one that's been my favorite since like Like the definition or just like the term? Well, the term and the definition, I guess, if you got it. For some reason, my first thought was Blue Waffle. Don't Google that. Google it. Rusty trombone. Uh, uh, the uh, what's the guy saying? Forty year old virgin. The, the 
like this sex alligator. I can't remember what he says. No, go ahead. Hit me okay. with him. <laughs> so my favorite is uh, Charizarding. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. You know, I, I, I know that one as uh, the Amazon. I have, when you light a girl's pubes on fire, put it out with your jizz, and then flap your arms and say, you don't have enough badges to train me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now from the Reddit community, I have the Cosby sweater. Go on. Oh, should I guess? Is that what <laughs> yeah, you... Yeah, if you, if you got some. It's like a sweater you put on while being molested? I, I don't know. Okay, close. It's the sexual act of eating Fruity Pebbles, Fruit Loops, Tricks, and Boo Berry, or any other bright, colorful breakfast cereals, and then vomiting the, tackety, vomiting the tacky, colorful mixture onto your partner's chest. The result should look similar to the incredible sweaters that Bill Cosby wore during his highly successful 1980s sitcom, The Cosby Show. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could have a... Okay, sure. You, you made me gobble. Give me your best Bill Cosby uh, impression. Chocolate cake for breakfast. <laughs> How delicious. <laughs> I think you've done that one before. My favorite is when he's walking out of the courthouse and he goes... <laughs> <laughs> he does it twice. He does like... <laughs> All right, the next one I've got is Porm. P-O-R-M. Porm. Um, no, I got nothing. You meant to search porn, but you made a typo and searched porn on Google. You saw this on Urban Dictionary and it made you curious, so you clicked it. Now you're here. No, oh, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> I do that a lot with the ESPN. I'll do like ESPN and it's like <laughs> they put sports at the front, but then it's like on the side. It's just like a bunch of like bullshit ads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Uh, oof. Okay. It's uh, we're going to get dicey. Okay. The next one I have is the Alabama Hot Pocket. Ooh, Alabama Hot Pocket. Yeah. So that is when <clears throat> you puke into her butt and then you put your dick in it and get everything out and then she eats the Hot Pocket. You are miraculously close. Okay. <laughs> you just you just have your holes wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not the first time I've been told that. Hey. <laughs> so it's a sex move where one shits into the woman's vagina. Ah. Uh, so you had the wrong hole on the dude into and the, wrong, the wrong hole on the chick. And the wrong uh, projectile going Right. In. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Well, gotcha. Uh, I think projectile yeah. goes with the hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that could be the name of this episode. The projectile goes with the hole. <laughs> I'd click that. Yeah. Ugh. All right. The next one I have is duck butter. God, I gotta eat dinner after this. Uh, Good luck. Duck butter. That's when you. Uh, that's when you. Uh, I got nothing, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got in a position like you're about to get all philosophical. Uh, yeah, I got nothing. So duck butter is the combination of sweat from the ball sack and anus that creates a buttery film on the grundle and butthole, occurring <laughs> usually from an unwashed scrotum, creating a smelly odor that worsens in thickness and odor by the minute, also known as DB or deep. <laughs> that reminds me of, <laughs> of uh, 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 the Imagination Land series from South Park where the sole purpose of Cartman is to get kyle to lick his balls because he proved a leprechaun was real yeah and he doesn't wash them and he keeps saying all right kyle they're extra vinegary for you <laughs> <laughs> oh shit okay um, all right the next one is the alaskan pipeline Ooh, all right it's gotta be something with the butt and poop and uh a, a penis uh that's all i got okay the Alaskan pipeline is the act of pooping into a condom, freezing the rubber overnight, and then inserting it into one's anus. <laughs> also known as the doob. <laughs> <laughs> Get the deeb and the doob. Uh, uh, okay. All right. The next one is the hungry unicorn. Mm. Oh, eating vomit off the dick. I don't know. Oh, you know what? No, unicorn. So it's on... Um, Standing behind her, like she's like sitting on her, like her butt, and then you stand above her, and then you like 
place your balls like on her forehead while you're erect. Ah, okay. So it's sticking out, and then there's another girl sucking it. I like it. There's got to be a name for that one. That's not this. Okay. Okay. The hungry unicorn is strapping a dildo to your forehead and penetrating a male that's on all fours. Once the dildo is inserted into the bum, the testicles are inserted into the giver's mouth, making the giver a hungry unicorn. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I like mine better. <laughs> yeah, yours is good. I like that. All right. Uh, two more. Uh-huh. Next one is crotch spiders. Oh, it's kind of, is it crabs? <laughs> just, is it just crabs? Oh, no. is it, um, let's say when you ejaculate under her pubes and it kind of makes like a, because it's all strung out between the hairs, it's like spider webby ish. Um, and then you take your fingers and you do that, like eight fingers and you play with it. I don't know. Crotch spiders is the pubic <laughs> hair that sneaks out of a bikini bottom. <laughs> I can picture it too. Like that like 51 year old at the pool and you're just like, ah! Oh my God. <laughs> and you jump into the pool, hoping that the chlorine can just burn your eyes out. And it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the last one I have is the Turkey tap <laughs> in honor of Thanksgiving. The Turkey tap. Hmm. Let's see. You baste a Turkey, you stuff a Turkey. Um, that's when you get a Turkey and you start going to town on the, the hole where you'd put the stuffing and sh- she eats a hole until she, let me save you eats. before, uh, you okay, get go canceled. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> a Turkey tap is when a male taps another male on the nutsack firmly enough to elicit short burst of testicular pain. <laughs> turkey tap. And you got to gobble after you do it too. Gobble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't top that first one. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. uh, what a That's... great way to end uh, such a family episode and, you know, Thanksgiving and uh, a yeah. time of giving and thanks. Thanks That's... for giving me that unicorn horn. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go uh, take care of this baby and uh, for the esports kids. That's what you get when you put your penis into a vagina and ejaculate. I know you don't really know what that is or means, but. And I just wanted to wish them a a lonely Thanksgiving because they won't be with anybody. No one likes you. No one cares about you. You're at home eating a frozen TV dinner or you ordered like McDonald's. No, that's what you did. You got nachos, McDonald's and Mountain Dew pussy. Yeah. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving, thanks. everybody. Happy thanks for giving yourself a hand job because that's all you're ever going to get. <laughs> now eat some turkey, take some naps, and fight with your family. Peace. Later, dudes. Go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs>